1979, I got my first digital watch. It was the coolest thing you could own at the time. So cool that even James Bond had one. And by the time the 1980s had swung around, virtually everyone owned a digital watch. And the manufacturers started trying to outdo one another, adding extra features, things like a calculator or a personal organiser. And this made people think the digital watches were just for geeks or nerds. So they dropped them and went back to the traditional analogue style watch. And recently there's been a bit of an ironic retro revival for the LED style watches of the mid to late 1970s. But unbeknownst to a lot of people, there was an early digital technology that was introduced in the 1960s and ran through to the 1970s and was primarily used in laboratory equipment. It's called a Nixie tube. It's a glass vacuum tube with all the numbers displayed on individual filaments inside. These light up when a voltage is applied to the pins on the bottom. Amazingly, this old 1960s technology was still being manufactured in Russia in the 1980s, and that's where a lot of the current supply comes from. Nixie tubes produce a beautiful glowing orange digit, unlike anything else, and there's a massive network of enthusiasts that have repurposed these old tubes into digital clocks. Here are my two. The larger one here uses iron 18 tubes, which are the largest ones that are still relatively easy to get hold of. It's very easy to get hooked on Nixie tubes, because there's something amazingly beautiful about the way they display the digits. It's a kind of retro futuristic way of displaying numbers. The flickering that you see isn't there in real life, it's just something that the camera picks up. In the next shot you can see how the individual filaments are lined up one behind the other. And this is the view from the side. And recently, Nixies have been showing up in more and more films. For example, if you watch Monsters Inc, you'll notice that all the digital displays are based on Nixie tubes. Here you can see the back of the Iron 18 tubes. They were made in 85 and 83 and came to me from Kazakhstan. The tiny tube on the left here isn't the smallest Nixie ever made, but it's the smallest one that's still easy to get hold of. So David over at Cathode Corner combined this tiny tube together with a power supply from a CR2 lithium cell and made the first commercially available Nixie watch, and I bought one. And here it is, it holds two Nixie tubes behind the mineral glass in an aluminium case. It's certainly not a watch for a dainty wrist, I mean here's my normal Casio, here's an oversized Metal Gear Solid watch, and here's the Nixie watch. Although that being said, when you look at the size of a Nixie tube next to the watch case, you realise that it's as small as it could possibly be, being only a little bit taller than the tube itself, and at 20mm thick, only just wide enough to fit one inside. Although it still looks pretty chunky compared to a normal watch. It's incredible to think, given the quality of the construction and the clever design, that this whole thing is the labour of love of just one chap. Anyway, it's time to explain how it operates. To change the time you have to unscrew the lid, and then the left hand button changes between 12 and 24 hour modes, and then lets you adjust the hours, and then the minutes, and finally the angle that you want it to operate at, because it's based on a tilt mechanism so that when you tilt your wrist, the time displays first in hours and then in minutes. The watch is water resistant, and the battery should last for between 4 and 6 months at 50 viewings per day. Quite a few of the components are user replaceable, such as the strap, the battery, and even the tubes if you know what you're doing. That being said, the tube should last for years. The ones on my clock in the lounge have been working now for about five years consistently. Steve Wozniak can often be seen wearing his Nixie watch, and in an interview with the BBC, he said it was the one gadget that he wished he'd invented. And there's no better endorsement than from the king of the geeks himself. Anyway, it's time to go. Thanks for watching.